present to you Professor Dr. Frederick Steiner and his keynote presentation entitled Landscape Architecture is the Future, Retrospect and Prospect. Thank you everyone at IFLA for the invitation to be with you today. Thank you also, Shamshul bin Abdu Bakr, for your guidance these past months. It's my pleasure to be with you today as we gather across so many boundaries. Whenever we approach a design assignment, there are certain assumptions we've made going in. Here's mine. Any landscape holds the possibility to both improve and regenerate the natural benefits and services of ecosystems. As you've gathered from my title, I'm going to ask you to do some time travel with me. We're going to revisit some figures and episodes in especially American design history as a way of projecting into the future. We have Frederick Lowell Olmsted Sr. and Calvert Vaux, and then Olmsted Sons, Charles Elliott and other associates to thank for defining the core scope of landscape architecture in the late 19th and early 20th century. They built on and expanded beyond the English uh, landscape garden tradition of estate design for the rich. The English also initiated the Civic Public Park, which Olmsted and associates dramatically expanded across North America. In addition to estate design and public city parks, the Olmsted firm also designed college and university campuses, roadways and boulevards, uh, cemeteries, civic institutions and grounds, arboreta and zoos, golf courses and other specialized recreation areas, new communities, regional greenways, and state and national park. Boy, what a breadth of, of uh, uh, projects they put forth. Uh, and Olmsted put forth these works uh, as healthy green refuges, uh, lungs of the city, from the challenges of crowding and pollution of the Industrial Revolution. When we think of lungs of the city, there's probably no more famous example in the United States than New York Central Park. Landscape architecture was later influenced by modernism. However, the foundations that Olmsted established for the scope, purpose, and style of the profession were intact until the 1960s. Then along came Ian McCarg, and he shook up the scope, purpose, and style of the field, as well as methods of practice. McCarg advocated that ecology should be the fundamental science for design and planning, and that ecological knowledge would improve human communities and limit environmental degradation. With his pioneering book, Design with Nature, published in 1969, landscape architects were thrust into a more central role in the environmental movement, pioneering impact statements, regional clean water plans, farmland preservation efforts, coastal zone management, and geographic information systems. McCarg also advocated national ecological inventories and global stewardship. So where do we take this platform of Olmsted and McCarg, which is as active and alive as ever in this first urban century? I believe we need a global perspective. Consider that though they were based in the United States, Olmsted and McCarg had wider influences. Olmsted traveled abroad to Asia and Europe, and he collaborated with an English-born architect. McCarg, of course, was born in Scotland, and arguably his most important collaborator was from India. McCarg put the whole earth uh, on the back cover of Design with Nature, one of the first uses of this iconic NASA image. And he promoted global scale perspectives. Local landscape solutions help inspire global actions and vice versa. I think um, that the ecosystem services concept will be helpful as we chart the future of the profession. By way of a quick reminder, supporting services are necessary for the production of all other ecosystem services, 
regulating services are the services that ecosystems provide as regulators. Uh, provisioning services describe the material or energy outputs from ecosystems. And cultural or contributing services are the non-material benefits. The question for our clients and for governments then is how might we move from depleting ecosystem services to enhancing and creating them? Because ecosystem services are so vital to human health and welfare, each in their own way, Olmsted and McCarg both advocated landscape architecture as a means for pr promoting public health. Let's look at each type of uh, Olmsted McCarg landscape architecture practice and see how that typology um, might be viewed through an ecosurfaces lens. Landscape architects have an uneasy relationship with gardens. Our ambitions are gra grander, but individual actions can add up. Take the North American lawn, a legacy of the picturesque. In Toronto, the ecologist planner Nina Marie Lister rebelled against her city's long grass and weed bylaw, and she filled her front yard with native Ontario plants. She argued that the bylaw is in conflict with Toronto's pollinator protection and biodiversity goals. Pollination is one of those ecosystem services that we tend to take for granted. Imagine lawns across Toronto, across North America, transformed into gardens with native and food producing plants full of bees and butterflies. Similar transformations are possible in other countries from the hutongs of Beijing to the apartment blocks of Milano. Here in the United States, over the past four decades, uh, landscape architect Anne Winston Fern has worked with residents of West Philadelphia to build and maintain community gardens. She uh, and her efforts inspired other undertakings. Sankofa Community Farm is located in Bartram's garden. John Bartram and his son, William, were important American botanists and explorers in the, in the 18th and 19th century. The oldest botanical garden in the United States, uh, which they planted, is now a public park. The Sankofa Community Farm seeks to foster deeper relationships with the land for older Amer African American families and newer West African immigrants in Southwest Philadelphia. The farm employs high school interns, produces and distributes food, works with local families, manages weekly food stands, and involves volunteers. Located along the Schuylkill River, the farm is both a living classroom and an outdoor uh, refuge. A framework for contributing ecosystem services is provided by the Green Business Certification Inc.'s Sites Rating System. Although grounded in the United States, site certification is being pursued for park and other landscape uh, projects internationally, most notably in China, Brazil, and Canada. Sites encompasses the traditional site design process with an ecosystem services focus. Guidance is provided for the use of water, soil, vegetation, and materials for human health and well being from pre design through construction onto operations and maintenance. One striking example of ecosystem services in action is the Zuhi Runway Park in Shanghai on Shanghai's former airport, which is site certified at the gold level. The park incorporates the Chinese sponge city concept in that it captures and cleans stormwater. In writing about 19th century um, university and college campuses, Olmsted advocated that the campus be integrated into the teaching missions of institutions. His plan for Stanford uh, illustrates this point. College and university campuses 
continue to pro provide opportunities for students to learn beyond the classroom. The new campus of the Dell Medical School at the University of Texas at Austin, completed in 2017, was an early uh, adaption of sites. It is designed to be an urban oasis that illustrates environmental and human health benefits to students, faculty, patients, and the broader Austin, Texas community. A degraded stream corridor was restored, removed, removing invasive species and planting um, native vegetation in the process. The new medical school district also improved stormwater flow. Olmsted and his colleagues also designed numerous roadways and boulevards. McCarg helped um, pioneer environmental impact assessment through his Interstate 95 route analysis in New Jersey. The terms parkway and boulevard imply a travel experience beyond getting from point A to point B. Roadways can fit the terrain or ignore it. They can wipe out habitats and kill animals or facilitate animal movement and safety. They can destroy prime farmland or preserve it. Consider the Merritt uh, Parkway in Connecticut, one of the oldest and most scenic in the United States, built between 1934 and 1940. In my country, around 29% of the energy consumed and the greenhouse gases produced are from transportation. On-road vehicles account for 82% of all transportation use, and many of these are single occupied. Clearly, we need to, uh, to better understand the intersection between transportation networks and the built environment. We need 21st century parkways and boulevards. Over the Mississippi River between uh, the states of uh, Illinois and Iowa, an obsolete uh, span of Interstate 80 has been proposed to be converted to a bison bridge. The bridge West Brown uh, lanes would be used for grassy bison grounds, while the eastbound um, lanes would be developed for walking, biking, and running. The design would educate people about the 60 million large mammals that once roamed across North America and were central to indigenous cultures. Before there were urban parks, there were cemeteries. In the 19th century, as American cities expanded, rural cemeteries provided refuges in places like Boston, New York, and Philadelphia. Cemeteries are still very popular places for strolling and dog walking. In my neighborhood, the Woodland Cemetery became even more popular uh, during the 2020 and 2021 COVID pandemic. Natural burials, uh, sometimes called green or conservation burial, uh, offer an, uh, an alternative to conventional practice. In this system, the dead are not embalmed using chemicals, but instead are placed in biodegradable containers. The body is allowed to decompose naturally and its elements recycled. In addition to reducing the ecological footprint of death, natural burial can also contribute to ecosystem services, especially when it's part of a larger uh, landscape restoration or conservation, habitat conservation effort. Here in Philadelphia, the West Laurel Hill Nature Sanctuary was designated with green burial grounds and is site certified. Um, more ubiquitous than even cemeteries are civic and institutional grounds. Among the cities here in the United States, that both Olmsted Senior and Junior helped uh, shape is Washington, D.C. The elder on the grounds around the Capitol and the younger on the White House and the National Mall. The McMillan plant, led by the junior Olmsted, has had a lasting influence on the civic and institutional landscape of the city. Civic design like this paved the way for urban design and contemporary movements such as landscape urbanism and ecological urbanism. It's the latter mindset at work in this project 
on the American side of the U.S.-Mexico border, a port of entry that earned site certification. In fact, many initial projects to receive site certification are civic or institutional. The U.S. General Services Administration, or GSA, helped design the site system and was an early adapter. GSA is responsible for supporting the basic functions of federal offices, including buildings and properties across the United States. So the agency has a very wide reach. The agency determined that it needed silver rating for its capital construction projects. The decision was implemented in GSA's facility standards for public buildings, uh, which is called um, the P100 document. P100 establishes design standards and criteria for new building, site improvements, infrastructure projects, and historic structures. Um, PBS provides workspace for one point one million federal employees, primarily with in courthouses, ports of entry, and federal offices, with increasing support for public infrastructure in my country, sites and the P100 are likely to take on even greater significance. In addition to institutional and civic grounds, the Olmsted designed many arboretum. Then, in the mid-1970s, McCarg helped to revolutionize zoo design. His ill-fated design for Partisan in Tehran, Iran, which was never built, um, he, in, it, in that design, he reversed his suitability analysis process. Instead of analyzing the site for suitabilities, he and his team anal analyzed what were the ideal habitats for animals around the world? The zoo uh, design was then generated on what conditions were best for animals. McCarg organized the exhibit within bioclimatic zones and within continents, taking into account the requirements of various plant and animal species. His spatial programming uh, of partisan, um, McCarg uh, drew on careful studies of the Iranian landscape. He also designed exhibits to draw out the uh, specificity of environments in Iran in concert with similar environments elsewhere in the world. So he essentially reversed his suitability uh, analysis technique to design habitats based on the needs of animals. Essentially, McCarg laid the groundwork for landscape immersion zoo design that in emphasizes uh, the inseparable relationship between animals and their natural environment. In uh, 2016, uh, I worked with Laurel McSherry, uh, Rob Holmes, and David Beyer on a design for the 2016 Arc Out Loud competition, which we called Miroir. Uh, that took McCarg's uh, approach one step further. Miroir envisions a 21st century aquarium as a node within a larger hydrological and ecological network. It's an aquarium that's not a collection of anim animals behind glass, but rather a series of So we put people in containers to observe natural habitats of other species. In Australia, the Nat National Arboretum of Canberra is another example of a model supporting ecosystem services. The Arboretum incorporates artworks throughout its garden, buildings, and forest, and is a leader in the protection of worldwide tree diversity. From terrace grounds of Canberra, we hop uh, across the ocean to a, a, a suburban part of Ohio and to another part, uh, another Olmsted project, 
um, that you may not be familiar with. Uh, as a boy, uh, I caddied uh, at the Hills and Dales Golf Course in one of the more affluent uh, neighborhoods where I grew up in Dayton, Ohio. It was only years later, I was sitting in an academic conference that I learned that the course had been designed by the Olmsted brothers. In fact, they had a hand in several of my uh, favorite hometown spots, and clearly they influenced my uh, aesthetic sensibilities. Of course, golf courses are just one type of recreational activity that can engage eco ecosystem services in a positive way. In Denmark, for example, uh, the city of Lemving uh, transformed an empty uh, lot where the fishing in industry once operated. And the design appeals to uh, different ages and interests. Golf courses also offer opportunities for habitat restoration. The monarch butterfly, for example, has lost 90% of its population in North America just in the past two decades. Audubon International and uh, the Environmental Defense Fund teamed up to create a program that partners with golf, golf courses to restore pollinator habitat in out of play areas. Now, back to the Olmsted practice once again. Uh, in their 1869 plan for Riverside, Illinois, uh, Olmsted and Calvert Vox created a fresh approach to designing new community. The design is based on the flow of the De Plains River and then protecting areas near the river uh, for pub public parkland. They also used a natural uh, topography to lay out the road system. So it's winding streets, which today includes uh, Olmsted Road, uh, differ from the Chicago street grid. And the new community is only a very short commute by train to the Chicago Loop. About a century later, McCarg and his Wallace McCarg, Roberts and Todd colleagues completed an ecological plan for a Texas oil man and developer named George Mitchell for a new town near Houston that's called the Woodlands. Mitchell was looking for an alternative to the expanding suburbs, and McCard convinced Mitchell that ecological planning made sense financially as well as environmentally. The Woodlands is one of the few places in the Houston metropolitan area that didn't see extensive flooding uh, from Hurricane Katrina and the other uh, hurricanes that have struck the Gulf Coast recently. Of all the park and parkway systems Olmsted designed, probably his most ambitious and influential regional greenway was the Emerald Necklace in, in, in Boston. Olmsted worked with his protege, Charles Elliott, from around eight, uh, 1870 into the 1890s on the plan. It provided park, open, and recreational space for the people of Boston. And because they understood regional hydrologic systems, the plan protected water quality and also managed floods. One of the most ambitious initiatives now underway in North America is the Yellowstone to Yukon project, first proposed by Harvey Locke in 1993. This continuous corridor of protected habitat stretches across five Canadian provinces and five U.S. states. Y to Y facilitates seasonal migration as well as spe species adaptation to climate change with innovative features like this animal uh, crossing overpass. In Germany's Ruhr Valley, uh, an international building exhibition in the 1990s generated a series of economic and environmental ideas to renew a sprawling landscape where coal mining and steel manufacturer once dominated. When the exhibit uh, closed, the regional planning body worked with the uh, region, cities and towns to develop a holistic plan for the new uh, corridor along the Emshire River. Um, and that, that has been pursued since the 1990s. One of Olmsted's projects that best exemplifies his transcendentalist ideals and how nature can be re-envisioned is Niagara Falls. 
Before Olmsted, the falls had been harnessed for industry. Olmsted joined the Free Niagara movement to remove the factories and to create a park and return the falls to an unspoiled state. They lobbied until New York Governor Grover Cleveland signed in, uh, into, into law in 1883, uh, creating uh, the Niagara uh, Reserve, which was the first state park in my nation. Five years later, uh, Canada created a partner uh, park on the Ontario side of the falls. Olmsted and Vox created a free Niagara design that stands as an amazing transformation of a reinvented nature. Olmsted also laid the foundation for national parks. In 1865, he proposed that Yosemite Valley and the associated Marapusa a big tree grove uh, be preserved as a park. Eventually, Yosemite became a national park. Olmsted Jr. Uh, later was a key author of the 1916 Organic Act that established a system of national parks and a professional agency to manage them. In 1983, uh, Ian McCarg was invited to tai Taiwan by three former students to advise the Taiwanese government on the creation of an, a system of national parks, particularly the Li Wo River Gorge in the Takoa National Park. It's now considered a model for the integration of nature and culture. Their plan encouraged the development of national parks around the world. Uh, Richard Weller, who is one of my colleagues here at the University of Pennsylvania, has expanded this idea in his World Park proposal. The World Park responds to the threat posed to biodiversity by destructive human activities around the world by creating three recreational trails passing through 55 nations. The trails are anchored by 36 biodiversity hotspots, the regions where scientists see the most urgent need to uh, emphasize conservation. In the 1960s, uh, McCarg uh, engaged in exploring route options for uh, Interstate 95 in New Jersey and the environmental consequences to various interventions. His analysis laid the groundwork for environmental impact statements. After EIS became a requirement for federal and some state projects here in the United States, McCarg's firm uh, was engaged in conducting several. Uh, subsequently, EISs have become a planning requirement in many nations. In their plan for Camp Pendleton uh, in California, Carl Steinitz, Richard Foreman, and their colleagues employed GIS technology to analyze environmental impacts for various scenarios for future growth. Through the 1970s, much of McCarg's work involved regional clean water plan. And although it's only in our current century that this work has borne fruit in some places, in 2006, the city of Philadelphia unveiled Green Plan Philadelphia, a comprehensive vision for open space in the city that focuses on green infrastructure. The plan was developed by WRT, um, the firm that McCarg established with his original partners. In the early 21st century, Susanna Drake and her D-Land studio colleagues developed the innovative sponge park for the Guamas Canal in Brooklyn. Their scheme uh, transformed one of the most polluted places in the United States by introducing water cleansing infrastructure along the banks of the canal. In this section, for instance, they, they illustrate the complex network of agencies that are needed to be navigated to realize this plan. In the 1960s, McCarg, with his firm and students, became involved in productive in a, in a productive agricultural area north of the city of Baltimore called the Valleys. 
in the parts where developers would most naturally have developed a broad open uh, valley floors, no ballot development would be um, uh, allowed. On the forested slope and of the walled valley, very restricted uh, development would occur. And the plateaus on the surrounding val valleys would be designated for more intensive uh, growth. And this plan has um, guided development in uh, the Baltimore, uh, that area of Baltimore ever since. Here in the United States in uh, Oregon's Willamette um, River Basin in uh, Oregon, uh, the population is expected to uh, double uh, in um, the next 30 years. So a consortium of scientists at universities and government agencies working with landscape architects produced an atlas documenting the relationship of people, land, and other life and the effects of land use policies over time. They went back and mapped the uh, basin's forestation pre-European colonization and then uh, project decades in the future to consider different development and conservation scenarios. Since McCarg's pioneering work was inspired in part by the Dutch response to coastal storms, coastal zone management has only become more important as we confront sea level rise. In Design with Nature, McCarg proposed an alternative approach to planning the New Jersey coast, a place of frequent hurricanes. Some 40 years later, um, Susanna Drake and her team at D-Land Studio took this approach further, just up the coastline in New York's lower Manhattan. In the new urban ground project, they proposed a series of parks and wetlands that would create new ecosystems, encourage ecological interconnectivity, and improve water quality. One of the most powerful tools at our disposal when it comes to ecological design is ge geographic information systems, and by extension, geodesign and spatial analytics. Beginning in the 1960s, McCarg explored how his method could be advanced through GIS. His ideas about map overlays um, organized ecologically uh, would have a considerable influence on the field. Uh, GIS visualizations are a format in which science and art both come to play. Pollock Agarwal, a 2021 graduate of the University of Pennsylvania's Urban Spatial Analysis Program and our MLA program, uh, initiated this energy transition guide. It responds to ideas about the so-called Green New Deal with a most wide-ranging set of responses to climate change, um, such as those that uh, are being considered by the U.S. Congress. In 1972, 1973, and then again in 1992, uh, McCarg promoted national ecological inventories for the United States. He developed a comprehensive ecological data collection system at the national, regional, and local scales. And in 1992, in the 1992 version, he provided GIS examples of the map data. Here's an example of what he called EMAP, or Environmental Modeling and Assessment Program, and the EMAP format was adopted um, by the uh, Environmental Protection Agency of the U.S. government. Although neither of McCarg's proposals were realized, Kung Jong Yu and his colleagues have advanced an ecological security plan for the People's Republic of China since 2006. The plan uses GIS technology and addresses, like McCarg, several scales. It addresses key challenges such as water catchment protection, flood control, desertification, soil erosion, biodiversity. As you illustrates, landscape architects can do much to use their talents to increase an understanding about the many interconnected relationships between ourselves and other species in our environment. Just imagine one landscape architect of small or a small team of them in every nation 
producing what you and his colleagues did for China. That would have considerable impact. As I noted at the beginning of my talk, um, on the back cover of the large format first edition of Design with Nature, McCarg used a very early uh, NASA black and white image of the horror. Clearly, he was signaling that design with nature, landscape architecture, is a planetary project. Like so many of his generation, McCarg was especially concerned about the global threat of nuclear weapons, which remains. Today, climate change is a global existential concern. Pope Francis called Earth our common home and advocated an integral ecology for its care. Landscape architects have the experience in designing many key rooms in our common home. So how do we advance landscape architecture? I, I, I think we need to build our expertise through case studies, through reflective practice, through rating systems that illustrate landscape performance. The types of work that landscape architects do are important. And if we recast our work to build and enhance ecosystem services and not to deplete them, then the cumulative impact of our projects can help save the planet and also build healthier places for people and other species to live. This should be our quest to green the earth, to heal the earth. Thank you.